One year ago today, we drove off in our brand new Silverado Trail Boss, and in this last year, I've discovered I've made a mistake. Aloha and welcome to the Lone Star Hawaiian Garage. If you have no idea who I am, my name is Shad Naholeva and I'm a crazy Hawaiian Texan that likes cars. Now the place we are in is a place I call paradise, but is also the location in which the Lone Star Hawaiian YouTube channel operates. This is my beloved fleet of vehicles, but today I am so excited to be part of Truck Central to talk to you about my 2020 Trail Boss because one year ago today, we drove this thing off the lot brand new. This is not five minutes out of dealership with a borrowed truck. No, this is my truck, my hard earned dollars paid for. There's a few things I want to point out as we walk through today's video. Now, the first thing we need to do actually is get the 07 Silverado and the ZL1 out of the garage because we're going to start the video off here in Paradise Cove. So this should be interesting because we are actually in the middle of a interior build on the 07 Silverado and the interior is completely gutted right now. So I got to figure out how to drive this thing without a seat. This should be entertaining. Here we go. Today's video, please excuse all the parts lying around. And I also want to say I'm just a normal guy. You'll probably see a kid or two running around the garage. This is our daily driver vehicle. You'll have car seats in the back, and you'll also see a couple modifications on the truck that we will not be covering in today's video. If you want to see all the details on the modifications and follow the build as we continue forward, there'll be a link in the description below, or you can click that link right there to go visit the Lone Star Hawaiian YouTube channel with all the updates on the 07, the ZL1, and all the other crazy stuff. We and I also want to say as we're getting into this, this video has been brought to you by Real Truck. Stick around to the end of the video to get more details on that. So without further ado, guys, here it is. My 2020 Chevrolet Silverado LT Trail Boss Crew Cab Short Bed. Yes, that is a long name. That's because these trucks come in a million different variances. We're going to talk about the aesthetics first. And we're going to start here at the front end because this front end really struck a chord with me when they unveiled it back for 2019. 2019 was the first year of this update and it shook up a lot of the, call it Silverado fan club because they changed so much what this truck was known for. With this front end, they've made it so aggressive. They've pulled the front end all the way over to the side. The headlamps wrap almost all the way to the side of the fender. They have an aggressive daytime running lamp. The LED headlights, they've even implemented these louvered fenders because they want to try to make this truck more aerodynamic, which is, to me, kind of funny. Continuing on the front end, the hood. This is one thing I didn't notice until I was standing here in person looking at the truck. The design they implemented here on the hood with that hood cowl is truly something else. The only wish I do have if they just went just a little more aggressive with that hood cowl to make it protrude just a bit more. The side profile, they made the front windshield a little more slopey to increase that aerodynamic factor, but I like the way that looks from a side profile. As you go up the sloping rooftop and in there at the very end of the cab, you have this little spoiler they added. I'm not sure if that's for aerodynamics or just aesthetics. Because this is a trail boss, we do in fact get this silly sticker at the back. Also here in the front end, if you have a different color truck than black, you'll notice the front end is gloss black and so is the rear bumpers. And you also get these fancy pretty little red tow hooks. With this model, I optioned out the Convenience 2 package, which is essentially the LEDs here in the mirror. We have parking sensors all around the truck. Because it is an LT, the front end is equipped with LED lights, the LED headlamps, the LED daytime running light, which you won't see on a custom Trail Boss. Now, as you continue through with all the models that are available in 2020, you have the RST, you have the custom Trail Boss, you have an LT model, you have a work truck, the Custom, the LTZ, the High Country, and last and definitely not least, I think the best, which is this truck, the LT Trail Boss. Now, as we continue here looking at these wheels and tires, these trucks come stock with Goodyear Duratrac tires. Now, size-wise, these are 275, 65, 18s. Now, essentially what that is, is about 32 to 33 inches in height, about 11 inches in width. The tread pattern is relatively aggressive for a stock truck. These are pretty noisy tires. I have aggressive tires on my 2007, they're Toyo RTs. And those, I would actually say, are quieter 
than these. The wheels themselves, they are 18 inch wheels and they're probably the best looking wheels that come stock on any Chevrolet truck. Now, as you continue back here to the rear end, they've implemented these big steps here at the rear bumper to be able to get up and into your bed. And that's, it's really functional. I use that quite a bit. And to the rear tailgate, which is one of my favorite parts, is this cool button. You push that and it opens by itself. This tailgate is so light. Even with just one finger, and the trucks I grew up with, you had to freaking slam that thing closed in order for it to stay closed. And since we're back here at the rear end, one other detail they added in 2019 that I missed for a while is this Chevrolet badge across the rear tailgate. I'm so happy they brought this back. I grew up in the back seat of a 1992 Chevrolet Silverado that was my dad's. The first pickup truck I drove was in high school was a 1999. Z71 Silverado. The first truck I ever purchased was my 2007 Silverado, which is there out in the front. And then this one is actually my first ever new car purchase, the 2020 Silverado Trail Boss. Again, this is my first rodeo with the Silverado. And one thing they did change on this one, which I wish they didn't, is the rounded fenders. They went along with Ford and Ram and went round with their fenders. This is one thing that Silverado was really known for, was more of a boxy fender. But they were so focused on aerodynamics with this big pickup truck, that on top of the louvered fenders, they have this body line, this sweeping body line that comes down, that's supposed to funnel air down the side of the truck to decrease the air turbulence to increase your mile per gallon. Now this truck in particular is rated for 20 MPG on the highway, and I believe it was about 16 in the city. Now what I have gotten in this over the last year in 12,000 miles is an average of 17 miles per gallon. Now this truck does have the cylinder deactivation, so you got 16 to 17 different variances of deactivation, so it actually can shut down nearly every single cylinder dependent on the load and amount of power needed. Now this is something I truly hate along with a lot of other Silverado owners. I will take the one to two less MPG to delete that all together and I probably will delete it down the line. And I get it, the EPA sucks. Even with all of that, to say I get 17 MPG in a truck and I get 22 on the highway, that's just impressive for a big pickup truck like this. It has quite a bit of bald eagles there tucked under the hood. We're now gonna hop over to the interior here, which is probably one of the most important parts of the vehicle because this is where the driver spends every moment of their time. And unfortunately, this is where a lot of my negativity begins. But we're gonna start with the positives. First off, I did option out for the leather seats. I do like the material of leather they use. As you see back here, you'll see a car seat there and then a location for a car seat right over there. And bless my kids' hearts, they are an absolute mess. So cleaning and maintaining this interior is important to me and it's made very easily by having leather seats. Now, one complaint which is very common amongst these Silverados is how stiff this seat is but it's actually a positive for me. It feels a little more like a truck. It feels more durable and it feels like it's gonna last longer. So very nice leather wrapped steering wheel. Now, one thing I didn't notice until I actually sat in this truck is they decreased the size of the steering wheel. It feels a little more sporty and more controllable and less like a bus. This is no longer a $20,000 truck. This is a 40, 50, $60,000 luxury-ish vehicle. And unfortunately, the areas of the truck which you touch every single time you drive, a lot of them have a lot of opportunity. Starting off with the start and stop button. Now this, I do like, but it's plastic, it's cheap, and it actually is not mounted in here very well. And it actually moves around every time you touch it. And unfortunately, my negativity continues over here at this door because Every time you drive the truck, you're gonna grab that, you're gonna close it. And this fit and finish just does not feel like it's put together very well. It just feels super cheap. This is a cheap piece of plastic. I just wish they would've used more premium materials in the areas which you touch every single time. Now my next complaint, unfortunately, is here at the gauge cluster. I'll say if both Ford and Ram destroy Chevrolet when it comes to the excitement and engagement of the gauge cluster. Now you'll notice off immediately how small this little screen is, but the actual functionality is called, you wouldn't want anything there that isn't there already. On the tachometer side, which I think is important, is the amount of space they've used between the 1000 and 6000 RPM is just that. I like more fluctuation on my analog gauge. I feel like if they had the one here and six down here, it'd be a lot more engaging. There's such a 
void white space that's not being used down here that I think they truly could be implementing and utilizing. On the Speedo side, kind of same story. The actual text and the size of text they use here, I feel like could be a lot better. Across the top though, I do like the physical analog gauges across the top. You have your oil pressure, your coolant temp, your fuel level, and your battery voltage all in physical gauges. I know you get digital gauges, I think in the LTZ and High Country and some of the GMC models. I like the physical gauges across here. Now my last complaint on the interior, unfortunately, is the driving position. The location which the steering wheel is, the seating position, and the gauge cluster, it just doesn't line up very well in order to see your gauges properly while you're driving looking out in front of you. Give you visibility from where I'm sitting, but as you look down, your gauges are partially covered by the top of your steering wheel. And the only way to see your gauges properly, if you raise your steering wheel up to about there. This is now about aligned with my eye level. So basically I'm driving like this, or it just feels like I'm driving a bus now. So again, this is just nitpicking and complaining as far as the driving position goes. And yes, my seat is all the way down and I'm only five foot 10. So the majority of the human race that is taller than me will actually have more difficulty seeing the gauges properly. You could just always, you know, lean it back and drive like a, but uh, yeah, I'm not about that. So that's my last and final complaint on the interior. And I hate complaining, but I'm so happy it's over with because the rest of the truck is phenomenal, except for one last thing I totally screwed up on, which we'll talk about right now. The Silverado I grew up in, that 92 Silverado had the 5.7 liter V8 in it. The first truck I drove, which was the 99Z71, had the Vortec V8, the 5.3 liter, and the truck here out front has in fact the 5.3 liter V8. My dad's has got well over 250,000 miles on it. One out front here has 130,000 miles with zero problems. The 5.3 liter is so reliable and so just tried and true that when I got this truck, I optioned it out with the 5.3 liter V8. We have six different flavors of engine. You can get this Silverado in a V6. You can get a Silverado in a turbocharged four cylinder. You can also get for this 2020, a three liter Duramax. This 5.3 in a few different variants. Or lastly, the big dog, the 6.2 liter V8, which was my big mistake. I got the wrong engine variant. And if I was to do this again, I would get the 6.2. So the 5.3 makes 355 horsepower, just over 380 pound feet of torque. There's a lot of power here. And paired up with this phenomenal transmission, you really hardly notice that you don't have all the power. But to be honest, I wish if I could go back and correct the mistake I made, get the 6.2. nothing like a beautiful Texas spring morning. What we're going to be talking about this morning is where this truck truly stands out amongst everything else and it's right here from the driver's seat. The feeling you get from the driver's seat here is what you look for typically in a truck, that testosterone boosting accelerator because you're driving a truck. Same time it is lifted from factory. You do have all-terrain relatively aggressive tires and if you do anything to the exhaust it does sound Quite aggressive but the more time I spend behind this steering wheel the more I realize how truly great this truck is there's a lot imperfect about it but those things are made void when you spend a lot of time here it's so drivable it's so comfortable at the same time in a city it's relatively nimble you have a good turning radius you have the good visibility especially with a crew cab this is a perfect mix of a family vehicle I'm gonna call it and the things that guys typically look for in a truck Unfortunately, I will have to say a disclaimer because this is actually my wife's daily driver. Yes, my wife drives this truck. And I will also say there's nothing hotter than a pretty lady driving a big truck. I will say that. But the times I do get to drive it, which is quite a lot with our family, and it's, it's something else. The pairing of the 5.3 liter and the 10-speed transmission is really a match made in heaven. For example here, it keeps you in the power band for so long. So second gear, third gear,
all of those gears are so close in ratio, it just keeps you in that torquey power band. Now gears one, two, and three are a very traditional gearing. You don't notice much of a difference down low. It's four, five, six, seven, and eight that are very, very close ratio where it's just boom, 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 boom and it pulls you along where a normal truck would kind of fall flat on its face. I know there's a lot of angst out there because this is quote unquote unproven. I am 12,000 miles in and it runs as good as the day I drove it off the showroom floor. Woo! As I almost slip and die. <laughs> Guys, this is a beautiful, beautiful truck. But I do want to say that this season of Truck Central is brought to you by Real Truck. Whether you're looking for a tunnel cover or a lift kit, guys, they have a vast selection of aftermarket mods of all makes and all models, including this beast right here. We'll have a link down below for you guys to check out if you want to check out what they have and see what you got for your truck. Again, real truck linked below. My goodness, guys. Got to tell you how much I love Texas. This place is absolutely gorgeous. At the same time, that truck behind me ain't too bad either. At the end of the day, you probably got the vibe from this. I'm a little bit of a Silverado fanboy, and this review would have been skewed because of that fact. But at the same time, I'm a huge automotive enthusiast. I love everything out in the market. And if I compare this truck behind me, the off-road variant of Silverado, against its top competitors, the Ram TRX, the Ford Raptor, Unfortunately, this truck will not hang with those two trucks. But at the same time, you're not paying that twenty dollars to $30,000 premium on top of the truck to take those home. For the normal amount of the human race, this truck will take everything you can throw at it. Whether you got a big payload, you're towing a big boat, you got a big family, or you have a long drive, this truck can and will deliver. Plus, a normal person isn't typically out jumping their truck. Mike? All in good fun. I'm a big fan of Mike's. But 365 days ago, actually 66 now, I drove this truck off the lot. And if I had to do it again today, I absolutely would. I love this truck. The only different choice I would make would be taking home the 6.2 versus what I currently have, the 5.3. I want to thank you guys for sticking around till this point in the video. If you are in the market for a trail boss, I highly support that decision. Go for it. You will not be disappointed. If you want to see all the modifications we've done on this truck to date and follow this build as it continues along, go check out the Lone Star Hawaiian YouTube channel, which will be linked in the description below. We also have the 07 Silverado, which the build is actually happening as we speak, and the Camaro ZL1, which we just lined up a partnership for a rowdy exhaust for that thing. So if you want to go check that out, I hope to see you guys over there. But I also hope to join you guys here in the near future. But until that day comes, y'all take care and aloha. Thank you.